Dit is Papa Alfa 0 Eco Tingo Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag 10 januari 2016. Dit is het bulletin van zondag. De uitzending van de Daily Minutes zijn in het weekend zijn in het Engels. Vrijwel zeker is er ook data en SSTV, maar niets is zeker wat ik gewoon pas bijzonder laat met de voorbereidingen voor vandaag beginnen. Today's show, as always in weekends, is in English. I am a little bit late, so nothing is sure with the data, but we won't do anything out of the ordinary. And we see, as time permits, what we can add to today's show. Our news items today are from the Amateur Radio Newsline on arnewsline.org. arnewsline.org. Amateur Radio Newsline report number 1993 with a release date of Friday, January 8th, 2016. We begin this week's newscast with word of the latest sale of beleaguered amateur radio equipment maker Tentec. The assets of the company, founded in 1968, have been sold to Ohio-based Dishtronics, according to recent news reports. Although final details have yet to be disclosed, and neither company has formally announced the purchase, Dishtronics owner Stephen M. Dishop, an 8 wff acknowledged the deal on the ARRL website. Dishop tells the ARRL that his vision for the business is, quote, strictly long-term, end quote. And he reaffirmed his 17-year-old company's commitment to its continued financial stability, despite what he called, quote, some tough decisions, end quote. Toward that end, Dishtronics has contracted with former 10-Tech engineering manager John Henry, KI4JPL, and initiated new service policies and related pricing. Dishop said 10-Tech's service department had been operating at a loss. 10-Tech's asset sale is the latest for the beleaguered company, which began as the manufacturer of transceivers for QRP users. Last April, RKR Designs of Colorado announced it had purchased 10-Tech's assets, along with those of Alpha amplifiers from RF Concepts. The two lines had been merged less than a year earlier in yet another asset sale. Dishtronics, which is committed to offering high-power, solid-state amplifiers and accessories to the amateur market in 2001, now has a variety of products in development and plans to introduce a new legal-limit solid-state amplifier in May at the Dayton Hamvention. Polish DXer Dom 3Z9DX is back in the news with his North Korea de-expedition. But this time, he's in the spotlight for being off the air. Amateur Radio Newsline's Graham Kemp, VK4BB, has more. The well-publicized de-expedition of Polish amateur Dom 3Z9DX is still on, but the amateur world is going to have to wait a little bit longer for it to happen. Dom rocked the airwaves in late December with an unannounced on-air demonstration from North Korea which was a big success, despite problematic solar conditions. Even with little fanfare announcing his presence, he managed to make almost 800 contacts, most of them in Asia. When he departed North Korea to celebrate the holidays back home in Poland, he announced a hopeful return in February to get back on the air. His plans have since changed. He recently told DX World that he will now wait until late summer before launching his long-awaited de expedition as P5. His goal, he says, is to find a location that will provide quieter operating conditions. For the Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Graham Kemp, VK4BB. If you've been using NOAA Weather Radio to monitor the changing forecast, get ready for a new voice to deliver the meteorological message to you. Amateur Radio Newsline's Bobby Best, WX4ALA, has that story. What does the weather sound like? Starting January 11th, whether the outlook is sunny or stormy, the forecast is going to sound a whole lot different. NOAA Weather Radio was about to deploy its first upgrade in 15 years of the system that produces its broadcast programs. And that upgrade will change the voice listeners here delivering observations, warnings, watches, and forecasts. A number of weather service offices, including the ones in Greenville, Spartanburg, South Carolina, will be involved in an operational test and evaluation period following the launch this month. NOAA hopes the new voice, generated by a new computer system, weathers the flood of feedback it expects during this period, which is likely to last several months. If all goes well, the new system will have a nationwide rollout later in the year on all transmitters. Comments can be sent to gsp.webmaster at noaa.gov. That's Amateur Radio Newsline's Bobby Best, WX4ALA. If one of your contacts this year happens to be a ham from Cornwall in the U.K., 
Don't be surprised if they identify with a call sign with a bit of a different twist. Amateur Radio Newsline's Jeremy Boot, G4NJH, explains. The year ahead holds special significance and identity for radio amateurs in Cornwall who are starting 2016 with the ability to add a K to their call signs for the course of the year. Approved by Ofcom late last year, this special K in a real sense acknowledges the national minority status granted to the Cornish people two years ago. The Poldew Amateur Radio Club successfully lobbied for the process, known as Notice of Variation, or NOV, under which amateurs can seek to modify their call signs. The designation, which is optional, is designed to be available to all of Cornwall's amateurs, regardless of club affiliation. Call signs at the intermediate level replace the E with a D. Applications could be made throughout the year, but all designations will expire on the 31st of December 2016. Advocates of the variation are hoping this recognition via the call sign will boost on-air activity among hams in Cornwall, and a number of clubs are establishing a Kerno Award recognising such activity. Details are available on the club website www.gb2gm.org. Meanwhile, amateurs await the opportunity to participate in a special event for St Piran, the 5th century Cornish abbot who became the patron saint of Cornwall. That event will take place on St Piran's Day, the 5th of March 2016. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Jeremy Bucci for NJH in Nottingham in the UK. Another British radio group, the Phoenix Amateur Radio Club, seems to have anniversaries down to a science. In fact, the anniversaries themselves are all about science. The club is devoting 2016 to an array of special events celebrating notable British scientists throughout history. More than 40 British scientists will be honored throughout the year, beginning on Friday, January 8th, marking the birthday of Stephen Hawking and ending on December 25th with Sir Isaac Newton. According to the 17th century Julian calendar in effect when he was born, Newton would have been born on Christmas, although the physicist's birth is observed in modern times on January 4th. All clubs in the UK are invited to participate, and the Phoenix Club members are hoping there will be many with a local connection to some of the scientists. The special events, by the way, will also celebrate many of the notable ham radio contacts that are expected, and offer bronze, silver, and gold awards for qualifying amateurs. When does the roar of a lion sound a lot like a friendly QSO? Only during a special event called Hunting Lions in the Air. The amateur event is designed to connect Lions Club International members with other members around the world who also have a radio license. This year it kicks off Saturday, January 9th and continues through Wednesday, January 13th. The 13th is a significant date since it marks the birth date in 1879 of Arizona native Melvin Jones. Jones, who later became a Chicago businessman, founded the service organization known as Lions Club International in 1917. Lions Clubs support medical research, disaster assistance, services for the disabled, and other community causes. Hams and Lion Club members are being encouraged to contact their local Lions Club to encourage participation in the on-air event.